Hello there, thanks for joining us. My name is Lynn Komjisha. This is News Around Uganda. You're watching New Vision TV News. In Masaka District, Finance State Minister in charge of microfinance, Haruna Kasolo, has said that the process to reconsider elevating Masaka municipality to a city status under the initial phase has been frustrated by local leaders. Kasolo also chorted a member of parliament, said the leaders have failed to present the required documentation to line ministries for consideration. Kasolo raised a concern while handing over close to 300 motorcycle helmets and reflector jackets to border border operators in Masaka municipality, donated by the Microfinance Support Center. He said the elevation of Masaka to city status is facing challenges with the annexation of the neighboring sub-counties for purposes of expanding the boundaries and raising the required population. Last week, Kalungu District Council refused to pass a resolution to approve the annexation of Kalungu Town Council to Masaka, backed by the District Council Chairman Joseph Chabagu. The Kalungu District Council has said the annexation of Kalungu Town Council to Masaka will almost render the district non-existent. From Namutumba District, the Namutumba District woman legislator stand an audience telling her story when she asked a boy to surrender his pair of socks when her period started in class. Mariam Naigaga said when her initial administration began in 1993, while in senior one, she confided in a boy who was uh, sharing a desk with her asking for a pair of socks to act as sanitary towels. Naigaga revealed this during a function where the Minister for the Presidency, Esther Bayo, launched a campaign geared at distributing reusable sanitary towels to girls in 24 senior secondary schools in Uganda. The function took place at Busalam Secondary School in Bukanga Subcounty, Luka District, where 1,100 students were given free sanitary towels. The campaign is financed by Benance Charity Organization, Best in Malta, and is being implemented by Safe Future, a non government organization established by Mbayo. The executive director, Benance Charity Foundation, Iris Dew, said 250,000 US dollars has been injected into the program in Uganda. We now take a break and look at today's new vision. If you cannot access the hard copy of the New Vision, visit your Google Play Store and download the Vision Group app. You'll access the e-paper there and subscribe. You'll get access to most of Vision Group's products. <coughs> You're still watching New Vision TV News. My name is Lynn Komjisha. News around Uganda in Gulu District, Gulu University and Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom have renewed a memorandum of understanding on the operation of Gulu University Hoima campus. Among the clauses in the renewed memorandum of understanding that will run for five years from now, Gulu University will provide technical guidance to establish a university in the kingdom. In 2014, the Kingdom entered into an MOU with Gulu University to run a campus at the Kingdom buildings along Rukurato Road, Hoima Town, on the invitation of the Amukama Solomon Gafawusa Iguru. The MOU expired three years later after the graduation of the first cohort, and the branch missed two years without admitting students after the Kingdom declined to renew the MOU. Andrew Chirunji Biakutaga, the Kingdom Prime Minister, said they consulted widely so that this time they sign implementable clauses. The campus will operate as a public university under the Universities and Other Tertiary Institutions Act of 2001 as amended in 2003 and 2006. Biakutaga said the university will intensify on the efforts to improve knowledge and skills which are crucial in improving the socio-economic welfare of the people of Bunyoro. Closing of the bulletin is news from West Nile. Prisoners in West Nile have complained about the unfair treatment from prison officials. Now, West Nile region has 13 prisons. The prisoners are complaining of torture, meager payments, congestion, poor quality food, longer hours of work, and being locked up early. 
One of the former inmates, Dixon Adomati, said prison wardens still beat up prisoners. He said prisoners are taken out for labor in private farms and sometimes they're not paid the 500 shillings per day for skilled labor. He implored prison officers to desist it from taking out prisoners for work unless it is a sentence for them. The officer in charge of Upejiji Farm Prisons, Ronald Karari, claims that they have records of prisoners deployed to work in farms and their payments. The regional prisons commander, Wesnay George Lenger, said all prisons in the region have complaint books to record the grievances of prisoners. Lenger also admitted that some prisons in the region are congested, particularly a rural government prison that is meant to accommodate 270 prisoners but currently accommodates over 800 prisoners. That was New Vision TV News around Uganda. My name is Lynn Komjisha. Thank you for watching. For more of these stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug forward slash video.